بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome back to our program مدرسة on air with me سامح جاد May Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept from us اللهم آمين يا رب العالمين In the second segment of our program we're going to be discussing دعوة calling unto Allah سبحانه وتعالى Praising, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are Muslims, alhamdulillah, but we don't want to be miserly and keep, keep the, the information for ourselves and keep the message for ourselves, but we want to share the message with people. We want to invite people to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to share the reward of da'wah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, لَأَيْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرِ النِّعَامِ In other narration, خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا If Allah uses you to guide one single person to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is better than dunya, better than all this world and whatever in this world. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying or telling us or instructing us to convey the message even if it is one verse. بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَا Convey the message even if it is one verse. So you, we don't have excuses. You know, I don't know or well, I'm not learned. Sometimes people come and say, you know, but Sheikh, I'm not a scholar. I'm not an imam. We say, give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and call unto the path of your Lord with wisdom, with good advice and with whatever beneficial knowledge you have, whatever correct information you have, we share it with people. We learn the knowledge and we teach the knowledge, right? So it's not, it's not we learning the knowledge and keeping it for ourselves, but our duty with the knowledge is to, to, to learn it, ta'allam, and then wa'amal, you, you, you act upon it, and then wa'allim, teach, ta'allam, i'amal, i'allim. This is our, our situation or our duty when it comes to learning the beneficial knowledge and share it with people, inshallah. So let's make intention, we're going to learn how to give da'wah, how to call unto the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is a segment of this program where we try to learn how to call unto the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the segments of our program, Madrasa on Air. All right, uh, so we, we are hosting today, inshallah, our dear brother Ashraf. Assalamu alaikum, Ashraf, and welcome back to our program. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ashraf Schneider is one of the du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a revert, he accepted the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at some stage in his life, and now he's, he's preaching the deen of Allah. And this is the beauty of Islam, is when, when, when it enters the hearts, when a person uh, uh, learn about Islam and sincerely accept Islam, then this person loved the deen so much that he want to share it with people. He want to show the beauty of it with people, the beauty of Islam with people. We want everybody to taste the sweetness and the tranquility of Islam. We want everybody to come to this faith to taste the sweetness of Iman. We, we wish paradise for everybody. We want everybody to enter paradise. We don't want to enter paradise alone. We want everybody to enter Jannah with us. So how can we do this? We can do this when we share the information, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan Ashraf uh, for coming back and, and, and stay. And this is the second program that we do together, inshallah. And uh, inshallah, it will be a beneficial program. Uh, but before we come to the topic of today's uh, discussion, we want to have some recap about yes. what, we, what we spoke about in the previous uh, in the previous program. Can you remind our listeners, inshallah? Yes. Yeah, so in the previous program, we gave a brief introduction <clears throat> regarding what Dawah is fundamentally and um, where we stand within the Holy Quran. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala encourage us to perform Dawah. For instance, in the Holy Quran, chapter sixteen, verse one hundred twenty-five, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala encourages us to go out there and to invite people. And we also spoke a bit about the um, characteristics of Da'i, um, how to be calm, how to be soft, how to be compassionate, um, how to use your body language, how to smile, and also to sit down with an individual when you speak to them, uh, to make them feel comfortable regarding the conversation that you are to have with them. So we basically discussed these characteristics and we started moving into this method that we are going to d discuss today, inshallah. Inshallah. So today I believe the method of da'wah, we call it the Gurab method. Indeed, yes. Right? Can you give us some information about the Gurab method? And how can our listeners use this in giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, so <clears throat> the Gaurab method is a specific da'wah technique and it is designed around the Quran itself and authentic um, hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And the fundamental um, principle of this is to bring forward the concept of ta'weed. That is the, the basis that we use in order to propagate um, this Gaurab method. Mm -hmm. And it uses a rational and reasonable um, interaction with the people that you speak to, to come to a logical understanding of our fundamentals within Islam. Mm. And it also avoids difficult issues and it is a way of moving away from potential of conflict because all too often we fall in a cycle where we continually just have to answer questions, answer questions and eventually those conversations may lead into points of conflict. 
So it is to remove that, to give a framework that we can use in order to perform DAWA, and then to build onto that. So GORAP itself is an acronym which stands for the G, is to explain the existence of God. The O is to explain the oneness of God. And then the R is to explain the revelation, why we believe in the Quran. And then the P would be for the prophethood, explaining about uh, Muhammad, <clears throat> peace be upon him, about his characteristics and why we accept him as a prophet. You know, when we speak about the logic of the grab method, uh, actually, before I know about the grab method, um, that, and this maybe this is the first time I say this information, but like in 2003, 2004, I was using the same method. Oh, mashallah. When I was making da'wah, I, I, I discovered that people, we give them da'wah, they keep on asking questions. Yes. And then by just... We're just responding to questions and not bringing them back to the to the main issue, which is Tawheed, the, the, the belief in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are wasting time. Yes. Because sometimes sometimes we, we invite someone to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we answer the questions. And then he might come and ask us, for example, about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And how can we prove that he's a prophet of yes. God? And then we spend so much of time to prove to him that, that, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is a prophet of God. But the person, in, he, he come and surprise me after then says, but I, do, I don't believe in the existence of God. Yes. You no, understand what I'm saying? Yes. When you say, I don't believe in the existence of God. So we wasted our time. We should have, the first question should have been that to prove to him that God exists. Yes. So I think that one of the main factors in the Grab Method is to understand where the, the, the guest is coming from, mm. or where the person, how, what is the beliefs of the person exactly? Yes. Do, do you believe in the existence of God? If yes, then we can we can move on to the next. Mm. Instead of instead of wasting our time answering some of the questions that are secondary questions, while we forget about the uh, the, the, the first and the main point, right? Uh, I believe there, there are some hadith also of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam speaks about uh, uh, the tadarruj in da'wah. We call it tadarruj. You, you, you do it gradually. When the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent the Sahabi to Yemen, and the Sahabi asked him to what should I call them to. The Prophet ﷺ immediately said to call him first to La ilaha illallah. I mean, right. Can you shed more lights about the logic behind the grab method? Yes, and quite interestingly enough, um, mm. the message that Muhammad peace be upon him gave us is also in the Holy Quran in chapter 3 verse 64 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that let us come to common terms as between us and you that we shall worship none but Allah. But um, the logic behind this is that once you go through the Gorab method and you can have a person agree rationally and reasonably to ex believe in the existence of God and then to believe in the oneness of God and then to believe in the revelation and the prophethood, no matter what questions they may have, then they would accept that because from this fundamental truth about believing in God and this entire go rap um, foundation, whatever comes from that must surely be truth. So if they already accept um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they accept the revelation and prophethood, then anything that comes from that, any questions that they might have that is a foundation for us within Islam, they will accept. Because from truth itself comes truth. You can't have falsehood that comes from truth. It is illogical. So that is the fundamental basis as to why we use this approach. Because no matter how many questions individuals will come with you, what they will come with you um, from, if you can have them understand this, then it's a very good place for you to move forward and to um, you know, perform <clears throat> this da'wah. Now, it's very important, however, to note that this is not the only way of performing da'wah. There are many other methods of performing da'wah as well. However, this is a, a map that we can use in order to you know, feel comfortable whenever we perform da'wah, not to feel overwhelmed with all the questions that people ask us, and to understand that we should use this as a map, as a guidance, but not as a rigid approach. And eventually you need to make um, this kind of approach your own by adding a bit more of your knowledge and your personality and everything into your, your da'wah approach. But mm -hmm. eventually, once you have this framework, Work, then it becomes very easy. You don't have to feel so overwhelmed when people start asking you questions regarding mm. Islam. Just to simplify things to our listeners who wish to be du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use this method of giving da'wah, how do you initiate the conversation? The, when you start the da'wah dialogue and the conversation with someone, how do you initiate it? With yes, them? so there are two different forms of initiation mm -hmm. when it comes to da'wah itself. Um, you get an active form of initiation and then you get a passive form of initiation. Mm -hmm. So active form of initiation would mean that you go out there and you speak to people and you would ask them certain profound questions to get them starting to think about the fund fundamentals that we hold dear. For instance, you can ask them, um, do you believe that life is just a game? Or you could ask them that, what do you think is the purpose of life? Or you could ask them, why do you think that we are here? 
or you could ask them, why do you think that evil exists in this world? Now, we have fundamental answers to all these questions based on the Holy Quran. And the thing is, fundamentally, every individual, some point in their life, had to sit down and think about these questions. Because everything in life, for instance, has a specific purpose. Even if you look at an earthworm, it has a specific purpose. Even if you look at um, cattle, if you look at all the animals, all the trees, all the landscape, geography, everything has a purpose. So, as human beings, what is our purpose? And everybody fundamentally had to sit down and think about this some point in their life. So once you ask them that question and they kind of give their perspective, then of course they would ask you, what do you think it is? And then you can say that in order for you to understand what I believe the purpose of life is, I think it's important for you to know what fundamentally my belief system is. And then you can, that is your introduction to go into GORAP. So that is the active approach. So if you are at a social gathering, you can go to an individual and start a conversation and ask them, what do you think is the purpose of life you know and that's a very nice question to to ask an individual to have a very nice full fleshed conversation with them and then of course we also have another field to this which is the passive now what it means is that somebody could approach you with a specific question for instance why do muslims pray five times a day then in then it is your introduction to be polite with that individual, like all the fundamentals that we've already discussed, to smile and to possibly shake their hand and to thank them for asking the question. And then our, our drive is to take that perspective that they have of Islam, that, that perspective that they have of life, to take those glasses off and to take our perspective, our glasses that we perceive the world through, to put that on their faces. And the way we do that is to say that in order for you to understand the answer to this question, it's important for you to understand the fundamentals of Islam. It's important for you to understand where I come from, why I believe the way that I do. And that is a way for you to say that, do you possibly have a couple of minutes for me to explain this to you? And once you have that confirmation, you sit down with the individual and then you take them through mm -hmm. the Gorab method. So these two sides about active and passive, you can use both um, these these um, initiations in order to start our with the individual, inshallah. I, I believe there are different scenarios Scenarios in the yes. way we, we, we deal with the guests and the way we deal with the people who are asking questions about Islam. Uh, every question has its own way of handling it. Sometimes yes. you need to start from there, you need to start from there. Can you elaborate more on, on this as well? Yes, there are some difficult uh, scenarios that you would get. For instance, um, an individual could possibly ask you, you know, why do women wear hijab? Are they oppressed? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Um, so in order for you to answer this question, you cannot just give them a yes or no answer, but a lot of people would be fundamentally driven for you to only give them a yes or no answer. But it's in order for you, it's important for you to approach that individual and to tell them that, listen, I can't just give you a yes or no answer to this. It's like me asking you, what is your name? Um, does it mean something good? Yes or no? Because there's so much more meaning to specific things. You can't just fundamentally say yes or no to something. So that is a way for you to say that in order of you to fully understand the answer to this question why i say that women are not oppressed when they choose to wear the hijab in order for you to understand the answer to this question, it's important for you to understand the fundamentals of our belief and that is a way for you to also initiate that um, another Another scenario that you might find yourself in is that a person would come to you with an absolutely <coughs> absurd question. For instance, they would say that, I heard that you want to kill our babies. Why do you want to kill our babies? Now, you're not going to go from this point forward and say that in order for you to understand the answer to this question, you need to understand the fundamentals of Islam. No, you're going to put that question to rest and you're going to say that that is absolutely not what we believe. Mm -hmm. Let me explain to you why we believe in compassion and harmony and love and um, to protect the people that are around us, especially when it comes comes to the fatherless, um, when it comes to um, the widow and so forth. And then you can take them back and say that this is what we believe and then take them through the Gorab method. Now, another question that you might be asked is that why do you believe that God exists? Now, here your work is already done for you. So they already want to know as to why, you know, you believe in God, which is the first initiation within Gorab is to explain the existence of God. So then you don't have to take steps back. You can just go directly into the Gorab method and then to take it from there, inshallah. Mm -hmm. uh, what, we, what do we call it? The common sense agreement between us and between the people that we are discussing with. Sometimes you need to, 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 to put certain criteria in order for it to make sense at the end of the discussion. You need to put like factors. Here we, what we're going to, this is what we're going to deal upon first. And then uh, if, you, if you agree to these conditions, then inshallah, we will, we will come to judge or use these factors for, 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 to, for it to make sense. 
What can you say about that? Yes, for a conversation to be productive and to actually build something upon a solid foundation, it's very good to come to an agreement firsthand before starting the GoRep method with an individual. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the best foundation to start that off is in common sense. And to agree upon using logic and rationality when answering questions. For instance, to give you an example which would not be a common sense agreement or an argument is that a philosopher by the name of Descartes, he would, for instance, argue numeral um, aspects of life and our existence which is slightly illogical but it's philo philosophical. So it has a grounds but it's not based on the common sense argument. For instance, he would say that our existence could be that we are brains inside a bowl of water and everything that we experience is based on sensory um, deprivation and so forth and the sensory experiences that we have around us. Or he said that every individual could just be the only individual and everything around him could be an illusion. So when you when you fall into these kind of argumentations with individuals, then you could argue anything, but that's not based on common sense and rationality. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you want to agree with, with the individual that you speak to, is that we will both agree to use common sense. Mm -hmm. um, that if something does not make logical sense or is not in accordance to the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we will not accept it as truth. And then building upon that will allow us to build a, a solid foundation and to come upon agreement with many of the aspects within the Gorab method, inshallah. Excellent, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We will just take a short break, inshallah, for about uh, five minutes or so for some ad break, and we'll come back after that. Uh, stay tuned. Welcome back to our program, uh, Madrasa on Air, and uh, it is the Dawah segment of our program, Madrasa on Air, today and every. Uh, and every Tuesday, we're having Brother Ashraf Schneider, and he's giving us some information and uh, encouragement to give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just today, we're discussing one of the methods of giving da'wah to Allah, and it's called the Gorap method. Ashraf, welcome back. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> shukran so much. I want to ask you about the ultimate aim of calling unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the ultimate aim of calling and, and approaching people and giving them da'wah? Yes, yeah, so basically we've discussed that our desire is to give forward the message of Taweed. Now, what we need to understand is that our desire is not to explain why God exists, because at the end of the day, that is a means to an end. As soon as you try to take your doctrine and what you believe, and you try to tell people that, listen, this is the truth, you need to accept it, then at the end of the day, they might become defensive. And at the end of the day, that is not the way that we want to do our da'wah. We want to invite people to the way of our life. And the way we can do that is is by explaining to them what we believe and in awakening that sense of fitra within them. So our desire so is not... Basically, just sorry to interrupt you, yeah, you, 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 what you are saying, just to simplify to our listeners, is that we don't instruct yeah. the, the, the person we're giving him da'wah, but we try to, to open his mind. Exactly. To let him think individually by himself and to make, it, make the decisions, but to awaken the fitra in the, Exactly, him. yes. Um, to awaken the fitra because ultimately within the Holy Quran we also find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that it is a responsibility of us to do that. For instance, in the Holy Quran chapter 30 verse um, 30, it says that adhere to the fitra of Allah upon which he has created all people. No change should there be in the creation of Allah. That is the correct religion, but most of the people do not know. And also in the Holy Quran chapter 14 verse 10, we find that can there be any doubt about God, the creator of the heavens and the earth? So this fundamental belief that every individual has been born in um, is the sense of fitra, that connection that they have with their creator. And our drive, our desire is to awaken that within them because ultimately all of us have come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all born in submission to him. And I believe that there's a beautiful hadith as well um, where Muhammad peace be upon him said that every child is born in a state of fitra. Then his parents make him either a Jew or a Christian. So every every child child is born in a state of fitra and complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and eventually what happens with this individual is that their fitra or their um, connection with their creator becomes clouded and this is due to their experiences and due to the arguments that have been um, given to them through the, through their lives and the revelations that they've been exposed to. Now, through explaining to them through rational argumentation and through the revelation that we have received and through re reflection and introspection, we can actually take this clouding that is upon their heart within that connection that they have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can remove that slowly and explain to them rationally why we believe what we believe. And as we take them through the Gaurab method, it is also very important for us to continually get that confidence 
conversation with them to ask them, do you understand what I mean with this point? Um, do you agree with me rationally? Now, you don't necessarily have to have that person say that, yes, I declare my faith that I believe this. No, you just need to get some sense of confirmation to ask that, are you still following what I'm saying? Do you agree with this point? Can we rationally agree upon this concept? And then we can we can take it from there, yes, in short. Mm. Okay, the, the, there's other, um, another point, or maybe the last point uh, that we can discuss mm. uh, for the day, Ashraf, the G in the grab method. Yes. Can you explain this one before we, uh, before we end our program, inshallah? Yes, no, definitely. So, Depending upon the two different ways that you want to do this initiation, it's either then through active, going out there and asking a person a question. For instance, you can ask them that, do you believe in a creator? And then you can take the conversation from there. Or you can do it passively where an individual comes to you and they ask that, um, you know, why do you pray five times a day? Or why do women in Islam wear the hijab? And all these questions. So then you can use and you can say that in order for you to understand the answer to this question, it's important for you to understand the fundamentals of Islam. Now, eventually you'll become so comfortable with this Qurab method and the framework that you'll be able to answer the question and still bring them back to the method itself. But in the beginning, I would also always advise to just try and take them directly to the fundamental principles principles and then to build them up from there. So say for instance you go to an individual and you ask them um, do you believe in a creator and that person says that yes I do believe in a creator. Now either you can choose to move on to the oneness of the creator to explain why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one with our second, why he is not begotten nor does he beget. Or you can decide to take them through the Gaurab method, explaining to them why God exists. Now, a lot of times, through the clouding of fitra, a lot of people from other religions, and even in Islam, they believe in God, they believe in Allah, but they don't truly know why they believe in Allah. And you can give them the sense of rational understanding in belief, to say that rationally it is actually um, you know, fundamental to my understanding and everything that I've been taught in life in order to believe in God. So it is a very rational belief system. Them. And then once you explain to them as to why we believe in the Creator, and then we do it through rationality and so forth, and then we get that sense of agreement. Now you might be asking yourself, you know, how do you explain rationally why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists? And through this Qur'an method, we always use the Holy Quran and uh, the authentic Hadith. Now, in the Holy Quran, in chapter 52, verse 35 to 36, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges our rationality and he asks us the following, or were they created by nothing? Or were they the creators of themselves? Or did they construct the heavens and the earth? Rather, they are not certain. Now, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing here is he's giving us four possibilities for our existence. It is either that we were created from nothingness, or we were the creators of ourselves, or we were created by something that was already created before us, or we constructed the heavens and the earth, and those two are, are combined with one another. Or the, the, um, the fourth option is that the unbelievers are uncertain about is that we were created by something that is uncreated, that is all-powerful and all-knowing, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if we rationally think about this and we apply our reason and our rationality, the first option is impossible because something created cannot come out of nothing. For instance, you can't just um, create an object without having materials in order to create that object from, or in order to um, have the power in order to create that object from. So from nothingness, something created cannot come into existence. The second option that we were created, that we created ourselves, is also illogical because something cannot create itself without existing prior to. Like a rational explanation of this would be that a mother cannot give birth to herself. It is an illogical argument. You cannot make that argument. Um, the third option is that we were created by something that was created prior to. Now, in order to understand this logically and rationally, we would, for instance, imagine dominoes itself. Um, like the domino effect, if you pack a stack of dominoes, like a hundred dominoes, and you flick one of them over, and then all the dominoes fall, because the one domino causes the other one to fall, and so forth. Now, a lot of people argue that our existence, this universe that we find ourselves in, is only due to a universe that existed before it, and that universe is only due to a universe that existed before that. Now, if we were to rationally think about this, if we were to be universe one in domino one, and there was a domino before this um, universe, 
um, that put this domino into motion to make it fall. And so you have domino three, domino four, domino five, domino six, seven, and at infinitum, then there would never be a cause in order to have our time and space exist or for our domino to fall. Because if the train continues to go back without something putting it to motion that is uncreated itself, then our time and space would never would never occur because our domino would never fall if that were to continue at infinitum. So ultimately what we find is that the very fact that we exist in this time and space means that we were created by something that is all powerful, that can produce the energy in order to put everything into motion as we find it today. We were created by something that is all knowing due to the fact that everything within this universe is to a perfect design. We were created by something that is not bound by time and space, that is also omnipresent. And we were created by something that is itself uncreated. Because if the creator was created by something, then that thing would also have a creation. And then so the cycle will continue until there is something that is uncreated in order for our time and space to exist, because then there would not, not be a beginning. But as we find in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the beginning and he is the end. And in the Surah class as well, we find uh, that say he is Allah, the one and only the absolute and eternal. He begets not, nor is he begotten, and there's nothing like unto him. So funda fundamentally, we find that this is the only logical um, explanation for our existence, is that we were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who himself is uncreated, who himself is absolute and eternal, for, through this uh, Quranic verse. Now, you can also make these methods your own, and you can also add towards it um, based on your knowledge and understanding. For instance, in the Holy Quran, chapter 21, verse 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges our rationality once more, and he says that, Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth will join together as one unit of creation, and we clothe them asunder, or we split them apart? Now, fundamentally, we understand this to be the Big Bang uh, through scientific discovery, but whenever I speak about... Um, Dawa, I'm very skeptical of using the word science because science always changes. For instance, to give you an example, 400 years ago, it was believed that the earth was at the center of the universe and that everything else revolved around it. Um, 250 years ago, we believed that the sun was at the center of the universe and Galileo Galilei was actually the, the person to propound that and the church rebuked him completely for bringing forward that, that prospect. But fundamentally, we need to you know understand that we should not necessarily attach ourselves to science because mm -hmm. the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far superior. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the heavens and the earth were joined together in one unit of creation before it was split apart. And this is the very single point of creation that even the scientific journals today agrees with that the heavens and the earth came from a singular hot and dense um, point which then split apart and expanded and that is what created the universe that we find today. So as you grow within your dawa, you can also use these different techniques and these different verses within your dawah, but fundamentally just explaining the creation of Allah and explaining these four possibilities for existence within the Holy Quran, chapter 52, verse 35 to 36, is a very good uh, structure to start off with and to build upon that as you become more experienced, inshallah. Mm. Thank you very much, Ashraf, for this wonderful explanation. <laughs> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for, for these wonderful points you gave. And I believe da'wah is uh, the duty of every Muslim to give da'wah and to call people to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us from this and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to be guides to other people. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Jazakallah khair once again for being with us in the program. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.